Mina-san, o k a r i n a s a i Today, well, as always, I struggle to find the words to describe this lady. Tiny, sweet, adorable, talented, all words I usually use to describe the girls, but something unique about today's cutie, she might have been in more seiyu units than any other girl in the industry. Yui Ogura, born August 15th, 1995, in Midori Town, Gunma Prefecture, currently with Style Cube Agency, while her music is published under Nippon Columbia. Yui has wanted to appear on television ever since she was in kindergarten, leading to her older sister applying her for a theater company named Tohai. There she was a child actress until the end of sixth grade, and due to her admiration for Aya Matsura, she decided to audition for Morning Musume. Her audition was not successful, however, so instead she joined the idol group Happy Style Rookies in 2008, only sticking with them for one year. And before we continue, I'll just say that her music career is insane, honestly deserving of its own video, and I've covered basically all of her units in my Seiyu Units videos. So for this one, I'm only going to fully cover her solo music and briefly mention the stuff with her groups. 2009 was her debut year. At the age of 14, she joined her first music group, a duo with Kaori Ishihara, their group name being Yui Kaori. Very creative. Over the years, they would have three full albums, all named after animals, and 12 singles. Also, a few oddly revealing photo books, despite being in middle school at the time. That is classic Japan right there. The girls also joined Maho Matsunaga and Arisa Nato, going by the name Team Decorous. Being part of Hello Project, having a whole album to promote Sega's Tetris Decorous game. This year, she would also join her agency Style Cube for the first time. Keep that in mind as her journey continues. She was also part of the radio program Happy Cuddy Radio Hyper, along with three other ladies, and they would form the group known as Happy Ten, releasing only one song to promote the radio show. And of course, she had her anime debut in Yume Iro Patissiere, having two roles Ringo Koizumi and Mint. 2010 was like her only year that only had anime roles and mostly super minor stuff, but she did have Tomoki Goko in Ori Emo. 2011, the Team Decorous Girls all became the Seiyu unit known as Stylips. Not being associated at all with the prior group, but pretty sure all the girls were in the same agency, so that's why they stuck together. With this group, she would have one full album, one best of album, and three singles. This year, her anime career really kicks off, having herself a bunch of leads. Those including Hermit in Dot Hack Quantum, Yuko Shionji in Heaven's Memo Pad, and Hinata Hakamata in Ro Q Boo. With this series, she formed a Seiyu unit of the same name with the other four leads. Those being Kanahana, Rina Hidaka, Yoko Hikasa, and Yuka Iguchi. The very definition of star power. Over the next two years, they'd have two albums and two singles, all tied to the anime. And she was also in Sket Dance as Suzu Chuma. 2012, Yui debuted as a solo singer under the label King's Record, with her good friends Inori Minase and Sumari Uesaka, with her single Raise, the ending theme for Campione, where she also voiced Athena. And she would voice Katase in High School DD, Kayo Zena in Hyoka, Toki Anjoji in Saki the Nationals, and Yuko Kanda in The Pet Girl of Sakuraso. 2013, Yui and Kaori would leave Stylips, with Miku Ito and Moe Toyota taking over for them. This year, she also left Style Cube and joined Sigma 7. Then, anime would include Komurasaki in Unbreakable Machine Doll, with her alongside the other two leads, Ai Kayano and Hitomi Harada, forming a very temporary seiyu unit known as Utagumi Setsugetsuka. A little difficult, but really fun to say. By herself, she had her second single, Baby Sweet Berry Love, the opening of Hentai Prince and the Stony Cat. While its coupling track was the ending theme for the game version, and she would voice Sukiko Susukakushi in both versions. She also voiced Rom in Hyper Dimension Neptunia, and lastly, a very iconic role of hers, Coconut Alba in The Encouragement of Climb. 2014 was her first solo photo book, Yui Memory. She then had two singles, Charming Do, the ending for Recently My Little Sister is Unusual, where she also voiced Hiyori Kotobuki, and Tinkling Smile. The first ending for season two of Encouragement of Climb. Other anime girls include Midori Fuse in Black Bullet, Chris in Cross Ange, and Azami Kagamihara in ZX Ignition. 2015 was the release of her first album, Strawberry Jam. Then, new single, Honey Come, the ending theme of Castletown Dandelion, voicing Hikari Sakurada in the same series, but she also had Maya Shimon in World Break Aria. Also, Bean Kan Chan in Shimonetta, and she began to voice Tomarin in TQ. In the year of 2016, she had her second photo book, Yui Hitachi. She changed agencies from Sigma 7 to Clairvoice. Get used to this, she transfers a lot, like more than any Seiyu. 
You we also had two new songs, High Touch Memory, the ending theme for the anime card fight Vanguard G Stride Gate, also voicing Remy Eltena, and Future Strike, opening for Vivid Strike, voicing Rene Berlinetta. Other anime include Miku Zeze in Twin Star Exorcist, and Tia in Regalia the Three Sacred Stars. 2017, no new music, the first and only time since her singing debut. And this year was the announcement that Yui Kaori would go on an infinite hiatus, meaning that they disbanded. And there was her second album, Cherry Passport. This year she had a lot of roles, but I'll just mention Beelzebub in The Seven Mortal Sins, Karin Kiratan in Hina Logi, Mayuki Hiragi in Hina Konot, Ayaka Kaname in Sarajere Children, and Nene Fujinoki in My First Girlfriend is a Gal. Jesus. Then there's another one she's pretty well known for, Kinoe Hayase the mom of the main character in Masamune Kun's Revenge. This woman is literally 40 plus years old and this is exactly how Yui's gonna look when she's the same age. 2018 was her third and my personal favorite photo book, titled Yui Pace. Then Yui-chan had two new songs, Shiroku Sakuhana, which doesn't seem to be anime related, and Eternal Boy, the opening of Angaku Shoujo, where she voiced Uori Mukai. Uori Mukae. That is so many vowels. This was actually a really good year for her anime career, so I'm gonna mention a lot. Sosogu Hoshifari in Pop Team Epic, Charlotte Izoard in The Rio's Work Is Never Done, Yaya Fushiguro in Yuna and the Haunted Springs, Teria Wan in Boarding School Juliet, Homare Kagayaki in Hugoto Precure, Manhattan Cafe in Pretty Derby, The Specials though, not the actual season, and another big one, she was the priestess in Goblin Slayer. She also left Clairvoice Agency and went freelance, and this was actually the year that she graduated from Showa Women's University, having a bachelor's degree in psychology. Fancy. 2019, her 10th single, Destiny, was the opening for ZX Code Reunion. Great cover. She had her third album, Hop Step Apple, and she joined the agency, Just Production. Shoutouts to the last person I covered. She's in this agency, too. Anime roles are a lot less this year. I'll just mention Chimari Maiko in Pastel Memories. Gurimi in African Salaryman. Absolute perfect casting and Miyu in Arifueta. 2020, yet another photo book, this one being called Yui Can. And then three new songs from her, her most ever. First up, I Love You. Next is Happiness Sensation, ending for the Shadowverse anime, voicing Alice Kurobane. And her only digital single, Very Merry Happy Christmas. Another amazing cover. Other Annie girls include Kiyoka in Princess Connect, Sana Futaba in Magia Record, Arika Yamamoto in Science Fell in Love, and three characters in the show Dogeza. Those being Yua Aneha, Ayame Omui, and then lead character Minari Gakesaka. 2021, two more tracks from The Small Lady, Clear Morning, the theme for Blue Archive game version, and Fight and Pose, the opening for Jahi Will Not Be Defeated, where she also voiced Kokoro. This is another really good year for anime, so I'ma quickly mention all of them. Selena Burke in My Next Life as a Villainess, aka Ultimate Game, Nase in Platinum End, from the same creators as Death Note and Bakuman, having her second pretty series role with Hanitan in Wacha Primagi. There's also Mimi in Gunma-chan, a series promoting her home prefecture. And lastly, joining the long-running shonen series Black Clover as a psychopath, Vanika. Then this year, she left whatever agency she was with, I think it was just pro, hard to keep track at this point. And then she would go on to join Atomic Monkey, at least she joined some of the cooler named agencies. 2022 was her 15th single, Love Vision, and her fourth and most recent album, Tart. If you didn't notice, all four of her albums were sweets themed. Very fitting. Anime include Verda L. Hazard in The Greatest Demon Lord, reincarnated as a typical nobody. Chie Nagishi in The Human Crazy University. Mei Hamano in More Than a Married Couple, but not Lovers. These anime titles really, really never cease to amaze me. But she also debuted into Kante Collection as a Matsukaze. But last for this year, and her last really good role in my opinion, she also debuted into Pokemon as the very lovely Marnie, or Mary, in the Japanese version. Then around her birthday, Yui Tama announced that she had transferred music labels from King Records to Nippon Columbia with fellow idol seiyu Miku Ito and Azumi Waki, just to name a few. And yo, shoutouts to Waki's recent marriage. Good for her. Yui's story comes full circle though, as she left Atomic Monkey and went back to Style Cube. Now for this year of 2023, her most recent photo book, Yui Time Has Come, and thank the lord that it has. I really don't like using the word hot to describe a girl, especially one so small and cute, but holy hell, I need some water. Anyway, there's her most recent single, Himitsu Melody, the opening for Yuri Is My Job, where she voiced Hime Shirasaki. 
She also had Yuki in the reincarnation of the strongest exorcist in another world, and Shironeko in Summoned to Another World for a second time. She is currently in new seasons of Shadowverse, Masamune Kun's Revenge, and Goblin Slayer, and at some point she'll be in the Pole Princess movie as Mio Tosaka. As always, she's got some smaller unnamed or super minor characters over the years in shows like Blend S, Akiba Maid War, Akiba's Trip, Inuboku Secret Service, Maid Sama, Konosuba Season 2, and Rent a Girlfriend, just to name a few of the more popular ones. Anime music that she has sang, aside from all those solo singles or unit songs, include the endings of Sere Dere Children, Ori Emo Second Season Ending 7, Schoolgirl Strikers with Rina Hidaka, World Break Aria with the rest of the cast, and then openings of Encouragement of Climb Season 2, TQ Season 8's second opening, Hug Precure's second opening with the other castmates, and Guma-chan with Karan Takahashi and Ai Uchida. Then both opening and ending of Hinako Note with the rest of the cast, having about 34 music credits total. And now onto video games, having like 60 credits. Obviously I won't mention them all, but we have the usual Azure Lane, Blue Archive, Alchemy Stars, Girls' Frontline, Arc Knights, Magia Record, Fake Grand Order, and Shadowverse. There's also anime tie-ins like Roku Boo, Stony Cat, Saki the Nationals, Hyperdimension Neptunia, Princess Connect, and Ume Masume. She's in some more mainstream stuff like Honkai Star Rail, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, and Xenoblade Chronicles X. Then there's the big one I'm sure you're waiting for, voicing Minari Hanasato in Project Sakai, performing with the group More More Jump. Her only two foreign dubbing credits include being in Invader Zim and The Boss Baby. Concerts include having at least six solo lives since her debut, Probably more, but that's just all I can confirm. Also, I'd imagine a handful of Stylips and Yui Kaori concerts. Then another handful of pretty derby events over the last three years or so, as well as some Project Sakai live events. Over at the two big festivals, she was at Animax in 2019. I don't know why it took them so long to get her. But she was also there in 2021 and 22. Then over at Anisama, she's been there a lot. She's like one of the usual suspects over there. Her first time was in 2011 with Roku Boo then 2012 with Stylips. That same year, as well as 2014, 15, and 16, she was with Yui Kaori. The 2016 one in particular having a cool crossover with Petite Milady singing the Lucky Star opening. She's also been there as a solo act every year from 2013 to 2019. Shoutouts to that 2019 year singing the Hamtaro opening with Maya Uchida. And she was there with Princess Connect that year as well. Sticking with this festival, she had a Stylips reunion of sorts with Kaori, as well as Miku and Moishi, the two girls who took over for them. This was in 2022, easily one of the hypest moments for me, but also in 2022, she performed with Pretty Derby. She's even been in the music video for the yearly theme in 2015, and she'll be at the festival this year as well. Okay, now that we're finished with that super amazing career, let's get into a few fun facts. She is 150 centimeters, or 4 foot 11. Jeez, suddenly I am hungry for a little snack. Sorry I'm simping so hard and just prolonging the video. I really can't help myself. For social media, she is on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and she even has a YouTube channel which has most of her solo music stuff. And she used to post archives of her radio program, Yui Room, though it seems that she has stopped doing that. She also has her own personal website, ogurayui.jp, and she has her fan club, Yui's Company. Her skills include classic ballet, tap dancing, jazz, and swimming, which she has a first level certification in. She's also got a fifth level Chinese letter certification, and one for fifth level English proficiency. While Yui's hobbies are shopping, karaoke, and walking her dogs or dressing them up. She actually has three long haired chihuahuas named Lupin, Chifan, and Muffin. The first two live with her, while Muffin lives with her parents. Speaking of her family, she has two older sisters that are twins, and both of them are 15 years older than her. Damn. Some of her favorite things are the game of life, the anime detective Conan, saying it is funny that even though he's small, his brain is that of an adult. Something I'm sure she can relate to a lot. There's also the movie Spirited Away, saying it gave her courage and she was deeply moved by Chihiro, who worked very hard throughout the movie to turn her parents back into humans. Aside from swimming, the sports she also likes are ice skating and skiing. Some favorite foods include ice cream, or just sweets in general, strawberries, and dried plum. Disliking mushrooms, seafood, raw fish, and natto. Those four things being the most Japanese food there is, absolutely crazy that she doesn't like them. Then again, I am Canadian and I don't care for the maple flavor or poutine. Last up for her favorites, she loves the actress Yui Aragaki, who's actually one of the most desired girlfriends in Japan apparently. Yui saying that her acting is skillful and that she's got silky hair. I'm sure them having the same first name helps as well. 
On top of performing the music beautifully, she also writes the lyrics for most of her songs since at least 2019. Also, most of her tracks peak in the weekly top 10 on the Oricon singles chart. She is very good friends with fellow Seiyu Sumire Uesaka, and I think she's actually just in love with her, but who isn't? Also, it's like really ironic that Yui is the perfect little sister, while Sumi P is the perfect older sister. I would really like to join that family. And finally, she's done motion capture for the Project Diva game series, meaning that she's basically the live-action Hatsune Miku. And with that, we have reached the ending. There's honestly so much more to talk about with her, like that time that she was in a short series to promote KFC. She really has done so much in her career, I'll definitely have a 50 facts video about her in the future. So look forward to that one. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and learned something new. Please join me in the next one about the two biggest festivals in Japan. I look forward to seeing you there.